If you had a computer around the year 2000, it probably had speakers that looked like these. Some even had a button for extra bass and if they had a 3D sound feature, they were priceless. And I don't know why, but back then every PC and its accessories came in this color. However, this nostalgic shade of beige isn't the only thing giving away how old these speakers are. There is also this chunky power adapter. It is rated for 13.5 volts and 1.2 amps for a peak power output of 16.2 watts. It is amazing how this modern phone charger gives me 5 times as much power despite being about half the size. I wonder if I can modify these old speakers to run from new USB power adapters. In theory it should be possible since the latest USB standards can provide hundreds of watts at a wide range of voltages. And if this hack works, it would mean that you could modify not just old speakers, but all kinds of functional electronics that do not use a USB Type-C connector. Step 1 is to look at the power adapter we'll be replacing. It's nothing more than a transformer followed by a full wave bridge rectifier that converts AC into DC. You do not have to open the transformer, I just wanted to show you how basic it is inside. Be aware that if the adapter outputs AC, or if it has multiple voltage rails, this hack is not going to work. What you need to know to replace an old power adapter is its voltage rating. Interestingly, if I measure the voltage at the output, I'm getting over 18 volts, even though the label states a rating of just 13.5 volts. But I'm not surprised, it is normal because the transformer is not connected to a load. If I draw some current through this high power resistor, the voltage drops and it's much closer to the given rating. So how exactly do we get 13.5 volts from a USB port? First of all, we need a power supply that supports the USB power delivery protocol. This is usually mentioned in the specs for the adapter. Secondly, we need a compatible USB Type-C to Type-C cable. You will not be able to request higher voltages from a Type-A port. Lastly, we'll need one of these. This is a USB power delivery trigger board and its job is to request a voltage from our power adapter. Without it, the USB port will not give us any voltage. But once the board is connected, we are getting 5 volts. And by pressing a button, we can cycle between the available voltages. We can get 9, 12, 15 or 20 volts at up to 5 amps for a maximum of 100 watts of power. And if you want to refresh your knowledge on volts, amps and electrical circuits, check out Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a rich, interactive platform where you can gain new knowledge or practice existing skills through puzzles and exercises. It offers thousands of lessons crafted by expert researchers and teachers across topics like math, science, programming, data analysis, AI and much more. I just completed the course in electrical circuits and I'm now refreshing my programming skills as part of my morning routine. I was impressed by how visual and engaging Brilliant's lessons are, with easy to understand explanations. Instead of forcing you to memorize facts and formulas, they are filled with hands-on problem solving to build your critical thinking skills. This elegant approach to learning helps you become a better thinker and problem solver, one course at a time. You can learn for free on Brilliant. Just follow my link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen. Brilliant is also giving my viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. And now back to the project. At this point we have to pick a voltage setting for our trigger board. I guess 12 or 15 volts should work fine, but just in case I decided to see what's going on inside the speaker. Here is the amplifier chip, a TA8229K by Toshiba. And this IC is for the digital volume control. I did not find any voltage regulators. The amplifier chip is seeing the full unregulated voltage from the original power adapter. I also found the datasheet for the chip and it looks like it is supposed to work with up to 15 volts. At 20 volts we'll be pushing it to its limits. So it looks like a 15 volt setting for our trigger board would be ideal. By the way, you can buy modules like these with fixed voltages. They are smaller, so they will fit more easily into whatever you are hacking. But if you have this configurable module, if you do not save the voltage setting, 
it will reset to 5 volts after it's disconnected from power. To save a voltage setting, you hold down the button and then connect power. The LED will start flashing now. Next, release and press the button to cycle through the available voltages. When you get the voltage you want, hold down the button for a couple of seconds. The LED will turn off. When you reconnect the USB cable, the module will boot straight into the saved voltage setting. Now, before I perform any permanent modifications, I'm going to test if everything works. The board is wired to a battle jack adapter and it is plugged into the power input of the speaker. Not surprisingly, it works. There is no unexpected distortion, the voltage is stable even at high volume, and features like extra bass and the digital volume control work fine. You can absolutely leave this hack right here and call it a day. I mean, technically, we have already found a way to power the speakers from USB. But I want to go the extra mile. Let's find a way to put this board inside the speaker. It should look a lot nicer, right? Well, that is easier said than done, but I like a good challenge. I tried something that one of my viewers suggested in the comments for a different video. I opened Fusion 360 and designed a holder shaped precisely to fit the USB trigger board. Then I printed it using my 3D printer. It is comprised of two parts. One is like a bed for the PCB with an opening where the wires go, and the other piece locks it in place. Notice that there is a slot where the two pieces meet, and these two pointy things prevent the board from coming off. Of course, there is an opening for the USB connector and two holes sized for 3mm screws. I put a couple of drops of glue to make the two pieces stick, and this gizmo is ready to be mounted. Unfortunately, around this point I realized there might be a problem with my idea. I was planning on wiring the output of the trigger module to the pins of the original power input. I'm still going to do that, and it's surely going to work, but in theory it will be possible to connect both the original adapter and the USB cable at the same time. I don't know what could happen, and I'm not sure how big of a problem this might be, but to be safe, I decided to add a diode in series with the USB power module. A downside of this is that I'll be losing 0.7 volts because of the diode's forward voltage, but it's not too big of a deal. Another solution would be to simply remove the old battle connector, but I chose not to do that to retain backwards compatibility. Now I have to cut an opening for my module in a convenient spot. There isn't an ideal spot for this, and I have to be careful because there is another circuit board in the way. Fortunately, the opening doesn't have to be very big. I marked it with a pencil straight on the plastic back of the speaker. Then I used my Dremel and a very thin drill bit around the outline of the opening I wanted. The tool cut the plastic like butter, and very soon the opening was complete. After I confirmed that the module fit inside perfectly, I drilled the holes for the screws. Now that the module was in place, I could screw it to the plastic housing using M3 screws. Finally, I soldered the positive and negative wires to the circuit board. Then I closed the speaker and fortunately didn't have any screws left over. My project was complete. Now let's see if it works as expected. Since this is USB power delivery, I can power the speakers directly from a compatible power bank. Now let's play some music. Yep, the speakers work perfectly fine. This upgrade is a success. And I gotta say, these speakers sound pretty good considering they're over 20 years old. So what would you like to see upgraded to USB Type-C power? Let me know in the comments and subscribe to see all my future videos.